standing to your feet, our hands and hearts toward heaven. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hope. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. Remain standing, give our ushers a big hand clap of love this morning, how we thank God for them. We are in a series that is entitled Anymore. This morning we'll continue our study. Go ahead and put that declaration of faith on our board and make sure we can see it. I want you to help me to declare this. In fact, I'll read everything you just declare anymore. Let's have praise practice. Shout anymore. One more time, shout anymore. Every time you see anymore on this screen, your task is to just shout it. Let's practice one more time. Shout it like you're fed up with the devil. Shout it like you're tired of watching young black men die on the streets of Beaumont. Shout it. We're almost there. Shout it like God is on your side. Shout it like you believe he hung, bled, and died. One more time. Shout it like the tomb is empty, the cross is vacant, and you win in the end. Shout it again. That's all I want you to shout every time you see it. This is a statement of faith. We're going to declare and decree. And we're doing it because we believe that what's on our tongue, Corey Bob, will tailor the future that we see. I have reached a place in my life where I have decided that I want more of God. I realize that in order for me to have more of him, there are some things that I must choose not to do. Here is your word. Shout again. In this sense, it's best defined as the point in which I tell the devil it's over. Shout it. Suggest that what was has concluded and what's new is about to commence. My God, shout it. Celebrates the fact that there are some mistakes that I won't make ever again. Shout it. Says, send Satan a memo that reads, I know you're a thief but you can't have anything that belongs to me. Shout it. I know that change is inevitable, but my progress is optional. Today, in the name of Jesus, I choose to make progress. With this in mind, I boldly declare, I won't let this giant live. Shout it. In it. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you, we do so because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. I pray, Lord, for your steadfast hand and covering upon me as I declare the sacred sentiments of the Savior written on the pages of Holy Writ. I ask that you fill me with the Holy Ghost. I ask that you anoint me afresh and anew. I ask that you forgive me of sins known and unknown. I ask for the saving of our sons. I ask for demons to be dismissed. I ask for satanic traps to be canceled. I ask for burdens to be removed, yokes to be destroyed. I ask for you to have your way in our midst. In the name of Jesus, who is Lord and Christ, we pray. And those who love him shout amen. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 48 through 51. Glad to have home our daughter in the ministry who has recently received her master's degree from Princeton. Well, y'all help me thank God for Minister Deandra Darby, who is home. Amen. (laughs) 
verses 48 through 51 will be the passage we want to study. <laughs> don't you like that, man? I like that. I don't care what you tell me. All right, here we go. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He did not run away. He ran to him. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his head that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon the, his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Say amen for the reading. Grab a neighbor by the hand, hopefully somebody you love and you like. If you're not scared of them, grab them and hold them and say, Neighbor, neighbor. I'm glad to be in church. The preacher needs your prayers this morning. All of your amens. This morning's sermon subject, I won't let this giant live anymore. You may take your seats, the grass withers, the flower thereof fades. The word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers. You may retire. Joe Walcott, an interesting blog articleist, Pastor Duraso, posed an interesting interrogative that would prick the intellect that would somehow reach the soul and the spirit, especially of those who claim to be born again. Walcott asked this question, when God sees you, what does he see? Many thoughts ensue thereafter. Uh, he sees his child. Uh, he sees someone worth dying for. He sees one who is the salt of the earth, the light of the world. He sees an heir for his inheritance. He sees a joint heir. <laughs> he sees an overcomer, a hoop in the KO, one who was supposed to lose because the odds were stacked against him, but because he was on their side they manage to overcome. He sees one who is more than a conqueror, that he sees one whose steps have been ordered by the Lord. He sees one who is triumphant and victorious. Uh, I want you all to know as I peruse my way through Walcott's blog article, I, I was shouting on every one of those. But that's not what Walcott says God sees only. He says out when Samuel, when God looks at us, he sees all of those things. But because we keep mentioning the main thing, we now become the main thing that he mentions. Walcott says that when God sees you, he sees a giant killer. We are surrounded in our current culture by the giants in our land. We are surrounded all of the time by giants that seemingly are too big for us to do battle with. We're surrounded by the, by the giant of broken families. 
Uh, nowadays, people get married, and before they can really stay married a good length of time, the marriage is under tumultuous attack, and they end up going their separate ways. Children have to get used to seeing a mother and a stepmother, a father and a stepfather. It's because the marriage and the family have been under attack, and the giant of divorce is in our land. Wait, not only do we see the giant of broken family, but we see the giant of poverty. Some of you seated here nicely in this cool cathedral on this July 2nd Sunday have never seen poverty. You've never been bitten by the bug that says you can't afford that or have that. To you who are seated here who've never ever been poor, we are not angry at your wealth. We are not upset about your plentiness. But for everybody else seated around you, we know the pain of poverty. Some of y'all were poor and didn't know it. Let me help you understand it. You know you have been poor when you have to wear somebody else's clothes because they can't afford to buy you new ones. You know you are poor when leftovers are not just a choice, they are a necessity. You know you are poor when you have one thing everybody has to share. <laughs> God help me. You know you are poor when everybody around you is poor and none of you realize all of you is broke. Ladies and gentlemen, the pain of poverty is so real. Not only are we surrounded by the giant of poverty and broken family, we are surrounded by the whole giant of miss and under education. Whether we realize it or not, by the third grade, they are testing young African-American men, boys, to see how many new prisons they'll have to build in the future. They are now shoving Ritalins down our little boy's throat because they're claiming they are super or hyperactive. And to make matters worse, by the sixth grade, we are flunking out of math. By the ninth grade, we are four years behind in reading by the 12th. 12th grade we're struggling to pass a standardized start test and for those who go on to college they have to start in remedial courses because they were not college prepped or prepared we are struggling with education primarily because the home structure is struggling because if you can't make them sit down and act right at the home front a teacher really has no real opportunity I'm trying to preach if you just help me. Wait. We are surrounded by the giant of infirmity. We have see people younger and younger dying from heart attacks, lupus, and other cancerous diseases. We are surrounded by the giant of systemic evil that Michelle Alexander in her book, The New Jim Crow, says is secretly a caste system that's locking people up and throwing away the key. We are surrounded by the giant of dead churches who pretend to be on the Lord's side but are secret agents and demagogues for the devil himself. We are surrounded by multimedia aspects that we think are our friend but are really the enemy in disguise. We are surrounded by the giant of oppression, separation, and social segregation. We are surrounded by the giant of political tyranny and bigotry. That whenever you have a president in the White House who would literally try to separate and segregate a nation, makes you know we got a giant in the land. And just in case you have had your head buried in the sand and refused to recognize it, we have the giant of gun violence 
violence that has erupted not in New York, not just in Chicago, not just in Miami, not just in Los Angeles, but in the 114,000 person Beaumont, Texas with seven exits and about a hundred pit bulls. Are you listening to me, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know about you, but there is a giant in the land. When you have to cover up young men 36 years old like Brother Deal in front of an apartment complex where he has been gunned down and watch his mother weep on television when eight-year-old girls have to stand up before a congregation and tell people the reason I'm alive is because my daddy covered me when they sprayed our house with bullets and took a bullet to her leg. When we have to lock young men up for pulling the trigger, there is a giant in the land. They don't make Uzis in Beaumont. They don't make that kind of stuff in our area. Ladies and gentlemen, it's got to be planted and imported and somebody's turning a blind eye to it. Maybe it's the church. You know, if the church is silent, silence does breed consent. I mean, after all, if your church ain't got nothing to say about this, maybe it's a part of the problem, not a part of the answer. And maybe, just maybe, it's the black Baptist preacher wearing his tailored suit with his window so far up he cannot hear the cry of a wounded community and just maybe it's some saints who so earthly mind, so heavenly minded they are no earthly good and maybe it's the school teacher who was only there for a check and maybe just maybe it's the parents who scared to raise their own sons and daughters I don't know what it is ladies and gentlemen but there is a giant in the land and that joker must die. It's the book of 1 Samuel. And the text says, Pam Clayton, that the army of the Philistines are in the valley of Elah. The text implies to us that Goliath is so big that nobody wants to fight him. He has his little armor bearer carrying his sword and his shield. The Bible says, and the armies of the Lord are there, but they ain't doing nothing. Can I please throw this in the pot while I'm making my room? It does no good to have a no good army. Who wants an army that's scared to doggone fight? Who wants to be on a team and ain't going to never play in the game? Who wants to be a part of a useless church that has a big building, a nice steeple, and ain't helping no doggone body? Hey, let footnote, footnote, footnote. We are too big to be sorry, Annie, y'all. I don't mind you boasting about your church and your pastor, but if we ain't helping anybody, it's a waste of time for me. I'd rather pastor 50 who got a guff goal to fight than 5,000 who's scary. I ain't scared. I'm tired of people being fearful around me who ought to be faithful that's within you. I need about 50 of y'all because I feel a shout right quick to tell your neighbor I'm here but I'm not sorry and I ain't scared to fight. Ladies and gentlemen the text says that David's father tells him go down to the valley and take the lunch. I like this because David gets there and his brothers don't even want to see him coming which lets me know ladies and gentlemen that when you do show up with the answer and you're not afraid to fight other people who've been there who should have been fighting are going to criticize you. Instead of his brothers being happy to see him, his brothers are upset to see him. They start to mar him and make mockery of him and say things like, oh, here comes David. But David looks at the same giant they look at. David looks at the same giant they're looking at. David looks at the same giant They've been look. David looks at the same giant they've been looking at and says, What y'all scared for? Don't you know whose side you on? 
the Bible says Saul, who the king, is afraid of the giant and calls for David to put on his armor. I like it. He puts swords in his hand and a shield on him, but I like David. David says, listen, I appreciate your armor, but I ain't never use your stuff. Come here right quick. When you fight a real giant, you ain't got time for new ideas. You don't need some new model. You got to stick to what's been working for you the whole time. If prayer has been working, use that. If fasting has been working, use that. If falling, for, if pushing forward has been working, use that. David says, I ain't never used that. He stops by your brook, Arwen Samuel, and picks up five smooth stones. Can I go ahead and shout you right quick? Some people say that the reason David picked up five stones was just in case he missed with the first few stones, he still have a backup stone. I disagree. I think he grabbed five because five is a number for grace. And you can't lose if grace is on your side. Grace will cover your front. Grace will cover your side. Grace will cover you up top. And grace will hold you under the bottom. I need some people in here who should have been dead but grace kept you alive. Hold on. I ain't the only one. I ain't the only one. You're making me feel like I'm the only one. Who am I talking to who've been against some odds that should have made you lose your mind? give up on life but the grace of the Lord kept you I need you to hop to your feet if that's true for you high five a neighbor and say grace is on my side when David whirled that rock he hit that giant in the head and he came tumbling down wait it ain't bad enough for the giant to fall David takes his knife cuts off his head and declares before everybody that what seemed invincible is now how possible. Can I tell you why I'm preaching this? Because the giants of our land seem too big for us to handle. But I got good news in this cathedral for those who believe in Jehovah God who sits high and looks low and has all power in his hand. It means I'm surrounded by giant killers. I need some people in here who have seen the poverty giant and you declare poverty no more in your family. You know what it's like to be broke, but you know what it's like to have enough. Where y'all at? Y'all quiet on me. I need a giant killer right quick who's been sick in your body and doctors told you there was nothing they could do, but you're still alive and well. I need you to hop to your feet and tell somebody that giant died as far as I'm concerned. I need some people in here who've done what everybody else could not do and have accomplished what people said you'd never accomplish. Where are you in here? Leap to your doggone feet and tell somebody I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. The giant of I can't have to die. I need some people in here this morning who are sick and tired of watching young men die at the hands of other young men with bullets flying hitherto to tell somebody that giant will die. We will not kill each other. We will empower each other. My sons are not going to end up in a casket before they are fathers and grandfathers. That giant has to die. I need some people who are fed up with the foolishness to just leap to your feet right quick. And if you have a son, you can't afford to sit down because the enemy is trying to destroy that joker. Leap to your feet like you came to do spirit spiritual battle and tell somebody that giant has to my son ain't going to be gay my son not going to be a thug my son not going to jail my son not going to have babies before he's married my son is not going to be an abuser my son ain't shooting nobody he ain't shooting up he ain't gunning nobody down he is moving forward and headed up with who am I talking to I need some people who came to do battle to high five somebody and say that giant must die How 
Do you kill? I know I'm over time. Just bear with me. A giant that's in the land. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Here is how you kill a giant. You ready? Reverend Taz Williams, here's how it happens. You have to remember the battles you fought and won in the past. Some of you have never had a spiritual battle. Some of you have never had to fight for your sanity just to stay sane. Some of you have never had to fight for your health. It's never been attacked. Some of you have never had to really fight as a Christian. And to you, I say, stay on the battlefield. See, what's wrong is you so far back away from the real line of fire, you think it's a party going on. But don't worry, your day is coming. Because there's no way out of here. You're going to have to fight to be a real saint. But for the people I'm talking to right now who've had to fight all your life. In fact, you've been fighting all week long. Fighting don't frighten you. Fighting fuels you. When you start hearing about a fight, you're talking about where at? What's up? I know how to pray. I can get a what, what, what you saying? Just hold on. I ain't scared. I ain't never been scared. To tell somebody this is going to require a battlefield. Ladies and gentlemen, this battlefront is so real. The person is David who is going to be king. Listen carefully because if David dies, Jesus never comes. So we can't even afford to lose David because he is heir to the throne. Ladies and gentlemen, but the person has a problem and his name is Goliath. And Goliath wants David dead. Goliath wants David dead. Goliath says, come on out here with your ruddy, ugly self. I'm going to kill you. But can I give y'all the shout of the text right quick? In the midst of all of that around the person of David and the problem of Goliath is a memory of previous victories. And if you have never won at least one spiritual battle, you can't talk about what God has done for you. But David has some previous experiences. He fought a lion and a bear brew and beat them both with his bare hands. And so David has concluded that if God could help me whoop a lion and help me with a bear, God's going to help me with a giant. Come here right quick. You thought the fight you've been fighting was because God was mad at you. That ain't the case. God was preparing you for the giants that was yet to come. If you ain't never had to fight for your family, you ain't never going to be the giant. If you ain't never had to fight for your life, you ain't going to never be able to handle a giant. But if you had some little fights along the way, then you ought to tell somebody, I've been sparring the whole doggone time. And I am ready right now to fight up. Listen, my daddy told me the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I wish I had about a hundred of y'all in here who've had some spiritual battles in your life and another giant don't mean a doggone thing to you. To look at your neighbor right quick and say, neighbor, if God could help me with what I've already been through, then I know he'll help me with the giant that's currently facing us. I need 20 of y'all, just 20, who've had to fight at least three or four times this year. Where are my 20? Hold on, I don't need 30, just 20. Hold on, that's almost 20. Don't join us if you ain't had to fight. I'm talking about fight for your life, fight for your finances, fight for your son, fight for your family, fight for your job. If you've had to fight, tell somebody, I've been fighting the whole doggone time. And if God can help me with that, he can help me with this. Why does God even allow the giant? Is the real question. I mean, after all, if he's a good God, why let a giant come anyway? I mean, if we're his children and he's supposed to protect us, why put a giant in the lane? Is God not in control? Has he taken a break? Is he scared of the giant himself? Hey, y'all, check this out. God always has a plan. Oh, God. I'm about to shout by myself. Did you hear what God just told you? God, hey, Joe Johnson, God always has a plan. 
just when you think it's bad and he ain't going to make it, God always comes through. God puts giants in the land so that when people come near you, they have to admit that your God is the one who drops giants like they're butterflies. You will never get a chance to shout about the glory of God being a being a giant dropper until you've had some giants to defeat in your own life. And when people see you after cancer, after divorce, after sickness, after poverty, after the illness, after the death in your family, after the devil has attacked you, after Satan thought it was over, after the stuff you've been through, after crying all night long, after going through hell and high water, they'll have to say what kind of God do you serve and you have to tell them he is the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob he is the God of Mark Luke and Timothy he is the God who died on the cross went down to hell paid out my lease and rose with all pay I need some people in here who can say my God is an awesome God he reigns from heaven and earth and while you're looking at me fighting a giant it was God the whole time This ain't the first fight. Ain't the last one. Ain't the first one. Ain't the last one. Ain't the first one. Ain't the last one. Ain't the first one. Okay, that ain't catching you. If he did it before, I'm just trying to find your address. He'll do it again. If he helped you the last time, woo, I feel a shout in me. He's going to help me this time. You got to remember the battles you fought and won in the past. Number two, watch this, and I'm going to try to get out here on this. Watch this. You have to literally recite your belief in the God of your presence. Okay, listen. Facebook gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> Here's why. Here's why. Uh, I, I use Facebook for ministry purposes, so I want to touch people. It helps me to touch and minister to people. But some use Facebook for other stuff. And uh, when gunshots start ringing out around Beaumont, people got on Facebook talking about, where the black preacher? Where your church at? And y'all, I couldn't help but take it personally. I ain't good with shutting up. That's not my forte. <clears throat> so Scarla Beverly, I, I, I sent a message to about five or six people and said, where your pastor at? I know what I'm trying to do. Let me tell y'all something real quick, and I'm finna quit because because my Frank Milton, my time is up. Let me just tell y'all this: people can talk about us all day, good and bad. But let me tell you at least one thing that's true: we ain't gonna sit here be sorry and silent ever. We're going to always do something on the Lord's behalf that says, God, help us take a stand. If nobody else is going to stand, we will. I need some people in here who know that the tip of your tongue tailors the future that you see. Taza, they did, David did not win the battle when he got to Goliath. The text says, when Goliath ran toward him, David ain't run. David didn't. I like a cocky joker. I like somebody who can talk trash and bag it up. Muhammad Ali says it ain't bragging if it's true. Coach Tick Price, when the giant starts to run at David, David says, oh, you're feeling froggy, so you want to leap. He goes toward that. Oh, I wish I had a praying 945. He runs toward the giant. And here 
Here is what he says. Before he even gets there, he said, you are looking at me, but I've got God on my side. So while you think you're going to fight me, you got to get past my God before you can ever lay a hand on me. And I'm dropping you today because my God is bigger than you are. Ladies and gentlemen, some of us are trapped between faith and fear. And you fear the giant because you have a lack of faith. But when you hear the word of God over and over, you start to realize Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want your faith to increase, turn 102.5 down and off and hear the word of the living God. And it is why when you come into this house, you don't come to be entertained. You don't come for anybody to tickle your fancy, make you laugh. This is not comic view. This is not death jam comedy. This ain't comic relief or comic hour. I ain't here to try to make you happy. I'm here to open up this Bible and feed your doggone faith so that when you face your giants, you know how to talk your way through and share out your way through. You ought to look at your giant and say no weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. You ought to look at your giant and say if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land. When you are facing your giant I want you to look that giant in the face and say the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside still waters he restores my soul I thought I wasn't going to get this far today but my soul didn't got happy is there anybody in here with at least one giant you need to kill today can I tell you how to kill it you got to be bold enough to talk to it if you've got a giant in the land that you're sick of. Leap to your feet all over this building. Look a neighbor square in the face. Tell them the giant has to die and I'm not afraid to kill it. I'm not afraid to look that giant in the face and say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid shake your neighbor by the hand hold that hand like you believe in God and say neighbor neighbor the giant thinks he's gonna kill me but I got another thing coming I've got God on my side the same God that opened the Red Sea the same God that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same God that kept Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. High five somebody and say, neighbor, this battle is for my son today. The enemy wants him in a casket, but the devil is a lie. God is the truth that God is going to see us through. That's why we don't have time to play church. I need somebody in here who has a son to just leap to your doggone feet. Hug somebody around the neck. Y'all ain't hugging just yet. I said hug your neighbor, hug your neighbor, hug your neighbor around the neck and say this fight is for my son. The devil is a lie. My son will be blessed. He's blessed in his walk. He's blessed in his talk. He's blessed in his laughter. He's blessed in his leisure. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Ain't he all right? Find one more hand. Hold it like you believe in God. And say, neighbor! I'm tired of what I see going on and 
the only way for the giant to fall is for somebody to be crazy enough to fight him. Tell your neighbor, I'm crazy enough to stand. If I stand all by myself, I'm crazy enough to fight. If I fight all by myself, shake one more hand and I'm out of your hair. Find one more hand, one more hand. Hold it like you've been born again. In fact, if you got a son, shake him and rock him. Woo, I feel all right. Rock him and shake him and say, neighbor, neighbor, the enemy will not have my child. That God is going to prosper my son. God is going to bless his generation. Tell them this ain't just for my child. It's for my children's children, for my grandchildren. I'm fighting the giant. I'm fighting him right now. Can I go ahead and give you a hint? You can't fight him with your fist. You got to learn to fight him with your faith. That's why Jehoshaphat sent the praise team in. Because God is not your weapon. God is your vicar. You win when you lift him up. Is there anybody here? lift in your spirit. I dare you to lift up your hands, open up your mouth, and act like you're doing warfare, and shout glory. Wow, I feel better. Shout glory. Just to make the devil mind, just to silence the enemy. Shout glory. Woo, I feel it. It ought to get better. Lift your hands and shout glory. Yeah. I feel all right. Can we do battle a little longer? Hug your arm around the neck and say, neighbor, neighbor. For everybody who's had to die senselessly, I'm going to say hallelujah, King Jesus. Hallelujah anyhow. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. 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 He fights your battles. Won't he help you through? Is there anybody in here he's ever fought a battle for? Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, he never loses on the battlefield. And if he did it the last time, ah, he's going to do it this time. Ain't he all right? Say it. Yeah. Say it! Say it! Yeah, 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 yeah.
Listen. I want to pray. Every young man here today, 30 and younger, y'all come here right quick. Every young man, 30 and younger. I don't care how long it's going to take them to get to the altar, just tell them to come here. Every young man, 30 and younger. Give me every man here. Come stand right behind me. If you can, even join in with them. Come here, come here. Every man, every man, every man. time is overspent. I'm tired of going to funerals. Yesterday, uh, Pam Clayton and I went to the funeral of El Kevin Maya. He died in the South End. To watch his family cry crushed me. You know, sometimes God has to crush in order for you to make something happen for you. when I heard his daughter say that when my daddy heard the bullets and the shooting that he dove on top of me to protect me. Maya took two bullets in the back. His daughter took a bullet in the leg. And when that little girl got to talking about she was going to miss her daddy, it was almost too much for me to handle. Man, Dak, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. Okay, so here's how this works. If we don't fight with and for us, nobody else ever will. I commend those persons who did rallies yesterday. I commend them. Are we getting ready to do a gun buyback? But man, Arwen Samuel has been helping me. One of the things my 